Let's learn about routing in this unit. When you have a single page app, you'll want to be able to show different views to the user. So let's say they start the app on view one, then they click on a link, they navigate to view two, they click on a button to see view three, and so on. This is usually handled in a traditional server-side application with a full page refresh. When the user clicks on a link in view one, or page one rather, uh, the browser makes a request to the server, and the server responds with a completely new page. There is a full page refresh that happens. This is not the case with single page apps. With single page apps, when the user clicks on something and the new view needs to be displayed, it's usually done without a full page refresh. It's the same page, but the view that's displayed to the user dynamically changes by the execution of JavaScript. And that JavaScript somehow removes the DOM elements of view one and inserts the DOM elements of view two. So the user feels like it's a different view. This switching between views uh, in an Angular application happens with a concept called routing. We haven't been looking at routes so far in this course. In fact, we've been building only single view applications. In the apps that we've built with Angular so far in this course, the view doesn't completely change in the lifetime of that app. Uh, it changes a little bit though. Things show up and disappear, user interactions, change views and all that. But what I'm talking about is changing the view of the whole viewport or window, right? So that hasn't happened so far in this course. So this kind of a change simulates navigation from page to page in a legacy application, and we haven't done that yet. Now you might be wondering, why do we need routing for this? We can still achieve this kind of behavior using what we've learned so far. We learn about ng-ifs and how we can show and hide stuff based on conditions. So consider this. Let's say you need to build a front-end application that consists of three different views or pages, quote-unquote pages. How about we just create three big divs, one for each view, and put them all in the same component? And then add ng-ifs to each of those divs. So view one needs to be displayed, div one shows up and divs two and three are hidden. If view two needs to be displayed, view one and three are hidden and so on. But as you can imagine, this is quite tedious. Well, thankfully, we don't have to do this and we can leverage the routing support that's a part of the Angular framework. Now, what does Angular routing look like? There are a couple of principles you need to understand. First is a concept of URL-based routing. Routes in a single page app are not purely managed by flags or switches in your component. They're managed by URLs. You need to be able to expose URLs in your Angular application that takes the users directly to those views. So let's say you have an app hosted at say foo.com, and you have a view called view1, you might want to be able to get to that view directly by accessing foo.com slash view1. And view2 is accessible at foo.com slash view2. So the same Angular app loads with each of those URLs, right? Your index.html of your Angular app loads when you access those URLs. But then the JavaScript in your Angular application is going to look at the URL and figure out which view in that application you need to see, and then it shows the right view. And then perhaps you can have a default view that the user sees when the user just goes to foo.com, right, without any sub URLs. So navigation here is controlled by URL. Routing is controlled by URLs, and that's what I mean by URL-based routing. So this is the first concept. The second concept behind navigation is component-based routing. Remember I mentioned the idea of having multiple views in the same place, controlled by ng-ifs showing and hiding things. As you can imagine, this is not practical because each view can be fairly big. And having a single component be responsible for multiple views is not really a good idea. How about an alternative idea? Have each view managed by its own component. View 1 is rendered by view component 1. View 2 is rendered by view component 2 and so on. This way, we have isolation of responsibilities and each view component knows just to render that view. So this would be a better solution. And this is kind of what Angular routing does. And that's the concept of component-based routing. When you need to set up a route, you create an Angular component that renders the view for that route. That component may render the whole view itself, or it might include other components and it's just a root node of that component tree. It doesn't matter. It just starts with that component. Now you must be comfortable with the concept of angular views being a tree of components. A root component depends on other components which depend on other components and so on, right? It's a tree of components. 
Imagine that happening for each view of your application. View one has a component tree, view two has a component tree and so on. And each component tree working together knows how to render that particular view. And each such view has a root component. So this is the concept of component-based routing. Now, if you put those two concepts together, you have URL-based routing and component-based routing, you can very easily understand how Angular routing works. So this is what happens. With Angular, you first define what routes are in your application. What are the routes you need for your application to provide the functionality you're looking for? Now, for each of those routes, you configure the route URL that triggers the route, and you map it to the root component that's responsible for handling the view in that route. And then you provide this configuration to the Angular routing framework. That Angular will take care of the rest. Once the user gets to a path that's mapped to a route, it'll remove the view that's currently being displayed at the time, and then it'll find and instantiate the new component that's mapped to the view that it needs to show. And the right view is shown to the user. So as the user goes from view to view, the right component, root component is pulled up and then the component tree is rendered for that view. So in order to create a multi-view Angular application, here's what you need to do. First, define your route URLs. These are the possible URL paths that the user can take to your application. Second, create the Angular components that's necessary for rendering each of those views. Each view can be rendered by a single component or again, by a tree of components. So you create those components and then code the functionality associated with them. Third, you map your route URLs to your components. You do this by telling Angular router which URL path needs to load which root component. And that's it, that's Angular routing in a nutshell. Now that you've understood the concepts, let's get into the code. We will explore creating routes in the next video by creating a new Angular project with routing all in place, thanks to the Angular CLI.